Today I'm introducing DB Optimizer 1.5.1. So version 1.5 has been out since mid-March 2009 and this is the point release now available in May 2009. And there's one super cool feature that we've introduced in this point release. It's uh, small coding wise but uh, enormous functionality for the user. So just to go over what we have in the product again, that's what the product looks like when we start it up. First icon is add a data source, and then we have the SQL with pencil. We can write SQL. We have a full editor um, with type ahead, code assist. And then what we see is this little red, uh, dial with like a red line, like we would uh, red line an RPM on a car. This feature allows us to run any query that we wrote in the editor and run it by multiple users in a loop or for a certain amount of time, which allows us to stress test SQL. One of the big complaints I hear from DBAs is that developers test a query by one user and they run it once and it, it looks like it runs fast and they're like, great, it's done. Then when they introduce it into a multi-user system, uh, concurrency issues come up that the developer never dreamed of. So now the developer can write a query, load test it, and when they load test it, they can profile it and see what, it, what results, what kind of effect it has on the database. And if there are any issues, they can tune it. But um, today I'm just going to go over load testing and profiling to see what that what we can turn up. So I'm going to connect to the data source. I just double click on it and that connects me and I can browse it. All its objects and indexes and tables. But what we're going to do now, what I'm going to do now is just load test a query. So let me pick out a query that I've got already written. Simple little query. In this case it's just going to be insert. So uh, I, as, a, as a developer, I can run this and it runs really fast, insert a, a table super quick. But what happens when I actually load test it? So here I'm going to take four concurrent users on the top right. I'm going to choose to execute it for a number of uh, loops. I'm going to say loop it a thousand times. So each of these users is going to insert uh, a thousand records. And then I'm going to take the sleep off and they're going to execute it as fast as they can. Now what happens? So I can hit this circle with the triangle in it and that will run the load. This, and this is giving me an opportunity to easily test something that was difficult for developers to do before and that's to run a query by multiple users concurrently at the same time. Before I kick it off I'm going to start the profiler. So let's profile, um, profile this database. So here's the database. We're connected to it and right now it's idle. Nothing's running on it. I'm going to go back to the load test and kick it off. So I hit the, go, the run button now it's kicked off. The question is, what does this do on the database? Immediately we see load coming in on the database and we can see that most of the load on the database is this orange color. What's orange? It's log file sync. It's commit. And we have pop-up on the uh, log file sync to explain what it is. And this is when users hit commit, they have to wait for the log writer to write that information to the redo log. So the more we commit, the more we wait for the log writer to write to the redo log. So what can we do about tuning this? This is something that the developer never saw when he, run it, when he ran it just by once by one user. It ran really quick. But uh, if he has to insert, if the developer has to insert a thousand records per user, it'd be much better to do that in a batch. So let's start another load tester. And this time I'm going to run a hundred inserts. So I just pasted in a hundred inserts and then at the very end one commit. So again, let's run it by four users. Each run it ten times, so ten times a hundred, that'll be a thousand. That'll be the equivalent to what we just ran with each user committing once. And again I take the sleep between executions off. Now let's run it and see what happens. Go back to the profiler and see what the load is on the database. Again, uh, we see the load and it's quite different. The Over here in the bottom left we have our progress bar. Our load has already finished. The progress is gone. And so this is the complete, this little bar is the complete load on the database doing it by w inserting every hundred records. Radically different from inserting every record. This is the kind of feedback we can get immediately, easily from a, de uh, uh, from a database from a developer's point of view. And a developer might be intimidated by the complexity of a database. The first run took we can see one, two, three, four, five bars. Each bar is five seconds. That's 25 seconds. The next load uh, 
took uh, one bar, five seconds. Looks like it might have even run less than that. And also, we can see what's going on now in the new bar, even if we want to tune it farther. So I pulled a little timeline across that bar. I see most of its buffer busy weights. I click on buffer busy weights. I get the details tab down at the bottom. It shows me the details from the buffer busy weights. I'm going to click on analysis. Now analysis tells me, does some analysis of what's going on. Um, remember, there's there's bubble help or flyover help on the buffer busy weight. But unlike log file sync, buffer busy weight is much more complicated. Log file sync happens for one reason. We're doing a commit. Buffer busy weight can happen for a number of reasons. So that's why we added the analysis tab at the bottom with explanation of the analysis. So in this case, it says if your block type of your buffer busy weight is a data block, well, what is our block type? We go over to the data and go to column one, two, three, four, five, block type. It's a data block. So that's the first section. If the block type is data block, let's look at the object type. Object type is column one, two, three. It's a table. And it says, for a table, uh, put the object in an ASSM table space, and we've actually told, we've actually collected what kind of table space here. It says ASSM manual, and what does that mean? ASSM is automatic space management. So if if automatic space management is in a type manual, it means it's not on. What we'd want would be auto. So we could move this table from a manually managed space um, table space to an automatically manual. But there's other options. And the other options are, okay, for a table, we could put it in ASSM table space, or we could put free list on the object, or we could hash partition the object. Now, I'm not going to do this right now. We can uh, Maybe I'll do it in a second one, but if we actually added free list to this table and or, move, um, or moved it to an ASSM auto, that is automatic space management, uh, we'd get even better performance. But the main thing I wanted to show, let me stop this profiling. Is that what a query that looks like it would run looks run runs very quickly on its own by one user? I'm going to zoom in here. Hit the zoom in bar. This query that looked like it ran really quickly with one user actually runs into a lot of concurrency and slowdown and bottlenecks in the database. We ran by multiple users and ran it in a loop. And then by looking at the flyover help, seeing that it's because of commit, going in and changing the application from committing every single record to committing every hundred records, we saw that we got a uh, over a five time improvement in speed of the query and ran into another bottleneck that again buffer um, DB optimizer helps us optimize. So this is one short uh, example. I'll be putting more up on the web. Thank you for listening and I'm super excited about this new version 1.51 of DB optimizer.